Hi, this is Eric Keller for Ochoy. In this video, we're going to talk about using VDB data to create things like this fiery uh, plume of smoke and steam using Octane for Cinema 4D. So I'm going to talk about how you can sort of set up the scene, how you can import the VDB data, and even how to generate it using Houdini. So let's start by taking a look at the scene in Cinema 4D. So here's the scene in Cinema 4D, and uh, it's actually pretty simple. If I move the live viewer out of the way, what you'll see is that uh, the scene consists of this sort of deformed plane representing my water, and it has a specular octane material applied to it. And then I have my volcano geometry, so this is my high-res volcano geometry, sculpted in ZBrush and exported as an OBJ file. So you can see some of the detail on there, and it just has a simple glossy material applied to it for the time being. The most important thing that we're going to talk about, of course, is what's coming out of the volcano, which is this fiery plume of smoke. And this is a VDB file, and VDB files are generic formats that can be used in a multitude of 3D applications, and they allow you to transfer volumetric data, such as clouds and explosions and fluid sims, between 3D applications. So the VDB format itself was created by an independent group of developers. And if you want to learn more about the format itself, you can go to openvdb.org. So how do you get a VDB? Well, the easiest way to get a VDB file is to go to openvdb.org and go to the download section. And if you scroll down, you'll see that there are a number of free example scenes that you can easily download and start working with right away, including some nice explosions with fire and uh, smoke and that kind of stuff. And of course, the files that I created for this project, you can download and work with as well. So to generate this smoke and fire, this fiery eruption that you see here, I actually used um, Houdini. And believe it or not, it's not that hard to do. And I'm by no means a Houdini expert. So I'm going to take you very quickly through that process of creating a VDB and exporting it as a sequence from Houdini, just so you get a little bit of a sense of how to work with this file format. So to create the effect in Houdini and export it as a VDB sequence, what I did is I brought in my volcano geometry using file uh, import, brought in the geometry, and that gives me a nice place for position and scale reference. Then I created a tube object by clicking on this button here on the shelf, and I placed that tube within the caldera of the volcano and kind of scaled it down so that it would fit neatly within there. And then with the tube object selected, I went up to the shelf, the pyro effects shelf, and up here there are a number of presets that you can use for quickly generating effects. Luckily for me, there happens to be a volcano preset. So with the tube selected, I clicked on the volcano preset and it added a number of nodes to the scene to automatically generate that volcano effect using the tube object as a source. So when I play the scene, you can actually see I have this animated uh, explosion coming out of the volcano. So to actually export the VDB sequence from Houdini, I need to go to Pyro Import. And within this node, you'll see Import Pyro Fields and Import Pyro visualization. I'm mostly concerned with the import pyro fields node. What I need to do is I need to uh, connect a converter to this node. So if I pull up the tab menu and type in convert, I can find convert VDB right here. Click on it to add the node and then add the input right here. And then to this node, I need to attach a file node. All right, so this is just a duplicate of what I've already done here. So the file node tells Houdini where to put the VDB sequence and what to include in it. So if I take a look at the convert node, I need to set the convert to menu to VDB because that's what I want to uh, output. And this will add a few more options right here, which I can leave these at the default. And then I want to tell Houdini what I want to include as part of the VDB sequence. And to do that, I can use this menu right here and you can see here are some of the options that are included in the simulation. So I'm going to keep things simple and I'm just going to choose uh, density and temperature. And once I have that set up, I'll go down to the file node. I'm going to set the file mode to write so that it writes the files to disk. 
and then open up the file browser to choose where I want to put the sequence. So the sequence itself, I'm going to give the name plume dot dollar sign f. This tells Houdini that I want to export a file sequence as opposed to the uh, current frame. Then the file format is going to be VDB. And then to choose the number of frames that I'm going to do, all I need to do is play through the simulation. So I set my timeline to 70 frames because I felt like that was enough. And then all I need to do with the file node selected is rewind and play the scene from the beginning. And as it plays the scene, it's going to write the VDB files to disk. And that's all I need to do to export the VDB sequence from Houdini. So back in Cinema 4D, I've set my Octane kernel to PMC because this will affect how the VDB looks and how it reacts with light. You can also use path trace. You can use the direct lighting kernel, which will render faster, but it will look a lot different. Uh, and the light will behave differently as it passes through the medium. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go into the Octane dialog and I'm going to choose Objects, Octane, VDB Volume. So this creates a VDB object. I'll select it here and then under the VDB tab I'm going to choose my file. So I'll click on this to bring up the file and then choose the plume sequence which I exported from Houdini. So I'll choose Open here. I'm going to set the end frame to frame 70 and the start frame to 1. So as I drag on the timeline, you can see that volume is growing. So go up to about frame 65 or something like that. And then you can see here it is. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the Octane renderer. So I'm going to choose Octane Live Viewer Window and let's do a render. So it's so looking a little bit on the thin side, so we're going to have to make some adjustments here. So let's move this off to the side for the moment, maybe shrink it down a little bit, and select our VDB volume. I want to make sure that my mappings are set correctly, so I have my absorption mapping and my scatter mapping set to density. So if you remember, when I exported the VDB sequence from Houdini, I included these attributes. I also have emission mapping set to temperature. I can use these scale settings here to change the scale of how those uh, attributes are mapped to the surface. So if I set these up to 10, you'll start to see a bit of a change here. Let's try setting this up to 50. And you can see the change up there. I like to leave these at one for the most part and then just use the settings on the volume medium itself to make adjustments. That way I don't get too confused as I make changes to the volume medium versus these settings right here, which are kind of like multipliers. So let's go to the medium tab and let's actually attach a volume medium. So we have a density slider right here, which if I lower this, you can see my medium kind of disappears and I'll raise it and the higher I make it of course the more dense this will become but again I'm going to leave this at default setting of 100. Below this we have the volume step length which is going to have a big effect on how much detail we can actually see in the volume. If you lower this you'll see more detail and the render will get a little bit slower. As you raise this you'll see less detail but the render will be faster. So I'm going to set this to 0.1 and immediately you can see there's a huge difference. Now we're getting something that looks a bit more like smoke. So let's zoom in a little bit. And this may change depending on the VDB sequence that you're exporting, the scale of the scene, and so on. So the settings that I've uh, shown you so far are going to require a little bit of adjustment before you can actually see your VDB correctly. Now we're going to adjust the look of the uh, medium using the absorption, scattering, and phase options. So these relate to how light reacts within the volume. So if I lower the uh, color of the absorption, you'll start to see some effect. I can even add some color to it. If I wanted to make it a little bit more stylized, you can see I've got some nice disgusting green smoke coming out of the volcano here. Let's leave this at a grayscale value for the moment. Let's actually put this fairly high, but let the saturation, put the saturation down to zero. And the scattering determines how the light bounces within 
the uh, volume. So if I start to uh, raise this closer to white and sort of see how the light is bouncing off the surface and within the surface, and if I make this very dark, we can see we get something more like black smoke. So let's put this to a lighter setting. And of course, we can also set this to a color like red. And again, you can see the effect there. Let's put this kind of like white. And then the scattering phase is going to determine uh, whether we get more back scattering or forward scattering. So forward scattering is going to be the parts of the volume where the light first hits it and backscattering is going to be this kind of the rear of the volume, the opposite side of the light. If I set scattering phase to a negative number, we get more of a backscattering effect. And you can see that how it changes the look of the smoke quite dramatically. If I raise it to a positive value, if I get it closer to one, we're going to have more of that forward scattering where the light hits the volume. So let's put this to something like 0.68 or something like that. Just kind of playing around with it. And now what I'd like to do is add kind of a subtle glowing effect to the base of the uh, plume here to kind of suggest some hot glowing magma. So to do that, I'll go down to emission. If we look in the VDB tab, you can see that emission is mapped to temperature. I also have heat, which I exported in this version of the VDB uh, density. I'm going to leave this at temperature and go back to the volume medium tab. And uh, I'm going to click on this arrow here and let's add an octane texture. So I'll go to C4D octane and I'm going to use a texture emission node. So if I add that, you can see the texture, the volume goes immediately to white. So it's very bright. So let's make some adjustments to the texture emission node. Let's start by setting the uh, power down to, say, 1. I might even want to lower it. Even lower than that. Let's try 0.1. There we go. That looks a little bit better. I can start to see some of the details, so it's not overpowering. Uh, we can, of course, obviously set this to a color as well, if we want to put this as an RGB color or something like that. But I want to map the color to the volume using an emission ramp. So I'll go down to the emission ramp section, click on this button, and go to C4D, and I want to use volume gradient. You can also apply a volume gradient to absorption and scattering. In this case, let's just stick with emission to keep it nice and simple. Now I'll click on the volume gradient tab here, and now we can start adjusting the colors of the gradient. So I'll click on this white uh, color marker right here, and let's set this to a very dark red, something like that. And we can start to adjust the gradient to kind of push that black color over to the right, which is going to help kind of force that red color down a little bit more into sort of the base of the volume because I just want something that's kind of subtle. So let's zoom in here a little bit. And at this point, it's just a matter of kind of playing with the settings here until I get the look that I want. Maybe we'll make this a little bit more on the orange side. You can also set the max value. The lower I bring this, the more exaggerated the flame effect it gets. So let's bring this up to, oh, I don't know, let's say around 10 seems to work pretty well. Maybe then scooch it down just a little bit. So that's the basics of working with VDB files within Cinema 4D. You can create a lot of really interesting effects. And we'll revisit this project uh, later on and see if we can't add some spewing magma and all that kind of fun, dramatic, volcanic effects that we all know and love.